Yo dog, Kenny Boucher here. Next level painting. Hitting you up with another painting tutorial. So obviously, it's Friday? Who knows anymore? Anyway, we're gonna be hitting you up with part two of painting a space wolf rhino. Very important to me because I love space wolves and I also love rhinos. We're on the eve of the moving of the Beats Laboratory. We are in transit. Couldn't come at an earlier time. Yeah, I am hot in here. It is 80 degrees in the Beast Laboratory. I think the air condition is finally broken anyway, so it couldn't come at a better time. We're gonna be in transit. You might notice different backdrops, different backgrounds as we find the new home of the Beast Laboratory. But we worked hard this weekend and we got a lot of battle reports filmed for the long war. In the meantime, I gotta keep up with these tutorials. And I'm happy to do so and I welcome the challenge. Speaking of the long war, we got a new value. We've added to the Hall of Veterans, all active members the Hall of Veterans over at thelongwar.net receive an additional 6% off of the already everyday low price of Dicehead Games. That's dicehead.com. They already have like a 20% off on most GW product and they're talking about tacking another 6% on that. Obviously, go over to longwar.net and get your redemption code today. Anyway, let's jump into this tutorial. Let's do this thing, painting a space with rhino, part two. I'm gonna start off gonna go out of order and we'll work on those top hatches. I had them laying out on this piece of cardboard with double stick tape for a couple days and I was like, you know what? I wanna break in the uh, neutral gray tones and I wanna paint these up red. So obviously my classic uh, start from burn umber and work my way up trick. So very simple, burn umber, then scorn red, we're gonna blend them together. It's a really simple trick. I have a whole tutorial on this. Painting Blood Angels. Uh, I think it's uh, Painting Blood Angel Scouts. Literally, I have a whole 10 minute video on just this red. So check that out when you get an opportunity to really help out. The key here is to get really smooth transitions. Uh, don't let it speckle up. Use the appropriate amount of water. And this is a P3 paint, so it is thick. So you're gonna have to water it down a little bit. You can see you're getting an interesting transition already. Burnt Umber is just the heat, man, I love it. The next red is uh, Scarlet Red from Balejo. This is a pretty good traditional blood red. I'm gonna go in there and just burn out those tips a little bit with it and give us another little layer of transition. This is pretty simple. I'll say this is, this is a super easy uh, way of painting red. Very little actual problems actually arise when you do this, it's super easy. As long as you have all your paints out and you have the appropriate amount of water, you should be fine. But you gotta pop it out a little bit further than this. Since you're going with that blood red look, you gotta mix in a little bit of orange. Uh, I mix the orange in a little bit with the red. Any orange will do as long as it's a bright orange. I'm using a Vallejo one right here. I also use Troll Blood Slayer uh, or Troll Slayer Orange, whatever, GW. Literally, find a bright orange, it'll work. Super simple. We'll come back to that in the next video. I just want to show you how, how breaking monotony helps. Now I'm gonna jump right into the tracks. And this is one of my techniques. I've done a whole video on these too. Go through my, you know, go through the archives. You'll see a whole video on painting with uh, Typhus Corrosion. We're literally just slathering it on the tracks. Super thick, just completely painting the tracks of these rhinos. And Typhus Corrosion is simply the fucking best. So after you get it slathered on the rhino uh, tracks, you get it everywhere you want. We're gonna go in there, we're gonna do something kind of fun here. We're gonna pull out some pluck and pull foam and we're gonna sponge it on. And you definitely wanna make sure you don't have a lot of this on your on your sponge because this will, um, can't take it back is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so sponge it on, speckle it on, do your best, be methodical and you know, be aware of how much pressure you're applying with the sponge too. Like, I, I mean, it does take a little practice. I would absolutely practice on a couple of things that weren't actually the model you're working on. As you can see, it comes out pretty good and it's a pretty fun effect. Especially with the Typhus Corrosion, which is uh, textured paint. I love it. Can't say enough good things about it. It is the absolutely coolest thing GW has ever made. I'm also going to apply it to these smokestacks. It's really um, kind of just a universal uh, 
way of dirtying things up. And you can go crazy. You know, you can paint these smokestacks with them, and then you can airbrush a little bit of soot around them. And that's what I'll do here. And it is just, I, I don't even know how to explain it, man. Like, GW really knocked it out of the park with this Times Crimson. Take a look at that, man. Like, it's just obviously good. Now, you know, sometimes I, I use it a little excessively, but that's only because I love it. Anyway, let's move on to the metals. I'm going to jump on with some Vallejo Silver. And I'm just going to paint the trim of basically anything you think should be metal. Paint it metal. Paint it on nice and thick. Don't overthink it, you know. There was a time when I really overthought it and tried to blend it on. I was like, no, man, like, we're going to do something with the wash here later. If you know anything about next level painting, you know, we got to get our wash game tight. And this is what, you know, painting these solid metals is kind of a, uh, a preview to. That's why I like to use, like, really bright metals because I'm going to wash them. Go in there, paint the headlights, paint um, any of the nuts and bolts that you want. I don't always paint the nuts and bolts. I usually just highlight them with a similar color. You know, go paint the... Uh, the little vents and the little antennas, like all the little little fun pieces of the rhino that make them a rhino. I have literally painted, I don't know, 300 rhinos? I mean, there's no way I have painted less than, I'm gonna put it this way, there's no way I have painted less than 150 rhinos. Rhinos are easy and simple if you know where the lines are, if you know where everything is. Especially if you work in an assembly line, which I always paint four rhinos at a time at least. Let's jump right into some dry brush technique. Obviously, this is easy. We all know how to do it. In case you don't know, get a brush, kind of big, get the metal on it, and dry it off on a paper towel, and simply drag it against the grain on the surface that you want to create this effect on. This will create an awesome transition uh, between the uh, darker recesses and the brighter surfaces will give you an antique finish. This is a realistic look. This is an absolutely fun way to make your metals look realistic. Don't stop here. Go anywhere else you want um, and, and dry brush it up. You can, you can go as crazy as you want with, with, with a proper dry brush. We're going to come in and now we're going to hit the tracks on the side. I'm even going to start pulling it into uh, some of the heavier coating of the Tyvus Corrosion up there against the bottom lid, uh, bottom ledge of the uh, Rhino. Literally, do whatever makes you happy. And what makes me happy is sponge chipping. So now we're gonna throw a little bit of metal on this sponge, and you really gotta be careful here. Like I said, you can't really undo it very well. I mean, you can. You can always go back in with the Tyvus Corrosion and try to fix this, but it's just better to get it done the first time. So slapping some of this on, and as you can see, you're getting a totally textured look. I mean, it's absolutely looks pitted out. And it's pretty simple. And we're going to do the same thing with a little bit of this Rizza Rust, man. We're going to come in and we're going to drag it with a little bit of dry brush. We'll settle on some of the spots that are hard to get to. And then we're also going to sponge it on in some areas just to create that multi-tiered uh, chipping effect. Like it gives you total three levels of texture. And also, if you, I mean, if you go, if you're ambitious with your Rizza Rust, it's also textured. It's, it's amazing. You know, I'm trying not to overdo it too much on these tracks. I'm trying to keep it just really worn out looking, but not. I don't want to, like, undo some of the cleanness of the, the rest of the paint job. So, I mean, I will in some areas. But I'm going to let the tracks I'm, I'm, I'm gonna let the tracks out easy on this one. Because I really want to go to town with the Rizzo Rust on these vents. Before we use the Rizzo Rust, let's pull the airbrush back out. And let's get one of my favorite all-time browns. Harvest Brown from the Reaper series. This is absolutely one of the best browns in the business. Uh, my airbrush is acting like a little bitch right now. You can see it's just not... Uh, this. Literally, I move around so fast, sometimes I get little clogs in there. I know how to work with this. I'm just going to make it happen, and it's going to... It's it's gonna, it's gonna not going to have this, this subtlety that I want, but it's going to force my hand to do something a little bit different with the paintbrush. You can see a little bit of a pull in there. You know, sometimes even I have an off day with the airbrush, but I'll show you how to let it ride. So once we, we lay it on thick, we're going to come in with black and we're going to, you know, kind of go in the, the center zone there and we're going to draw another layer of soot. So like you have that brown burnout and then we're going to focus inward with some black soot. And you don't overthink it. Just spray it in there. The airbrush is acting like a little bitch. Just let it, just let it do its thing. No big deal. Because we're going to come back in with the paintbrush and we're going to, we're going to, we're going to tease this rhino who's boss. So, first things first, sponge. 
a little bit of typhus corrosion. Let's sponge it on. Get some of that 3D texture on these smokestacks. Next, go back to the Vallejo Silver. Let's sponge some of that metal over these uh, smokestacks that are trying to give us a problem. We're not going to stop here though, but you can see the textures coming through. Like it's really realistic. I love it. But here's where we're going to start selling it. Now, bear with me. When I paint these, I'm painting it for the camera. So this is not <laughs> the easiest thing to do. Uh, it's a, I'm showing you, a, kind of. I'm kind of doing it a little sloppy. And then after I yell cut, I'm going to grab this rhino and I'm going to make it. I'm going to, I have seconds to fix like a wavy line or a, you know, a too thick spot. But I'm, I'm trying to, I'm just trying to show you what I mean. Uh, I'm, it's, it's an exercise in, uh, you know, how to fix things. So that line didn't come out the way I want. So I'm dragging it down and now I'm getting water on my paintbrush and I'm going to use water to start spreading this Rizzo rust out and start streaking it down. Now these streaks are coming out a little bit fatter than I want, but I can, I can go back in with Rizzo rust and I can, I can drag it back in there. I can do all sorts of things, but water is going to be your trick to really streaking these out. And you can see it's, it's, it's coming along. And there's, there's a substantial amount of texture to it. So you're getting a real fun, just really worn out smokestack. Like this thing is just chugging along just as hard as it can. This is the little rhino that could right here. And you can, as you can see, the streaks, just keep the streaks alive. Gets a little bit more water in your paintbrush. Mix it in there. Start dripping it down. Like, yeah, excess of water. Sometimes I use my thumb to kind of like scratch it down with, my th uh, with the pad of my thumb. But don't worry, if you've seen the pictures in my gallery, this rhino's already done and you can see that these, I was able to save these streaks. And even here in this next scene, you'll see they look a little bit better after I've worked on them for a few seconds, right here. And there you go. Nice little realistic soot. Thanks for checking out that video. Don't forget, I've got tons of other tutorials in the archives and I do this every week for free. If you're looking for an ad-free experience, check out the longward.net. All these videos come out a week early with exclusive access and exclusive downloads and ad-free. Also, check out my best friend Rob Bear at Spiky Bits and of course the Long War YouTube channel for all the freshest battery parts. Thanks for watching.